know how big I am into like organic marketing and referrals and realtors and organic grassroots marketing. Mm-hmm. I put much, I put so much work into that and have built that up so much. My my online my my, my search my SEO is a little lagging, mm-hmm. but it's catching up. It'll catch up. I want to. Yeah, I want to touch on that, man. Um, in this industry, when, when guys usually start a moving company, they go straight to paid advertising and, and buying leads, right? But you went the other route. You went the organic route, and you started networking right off the bat, and that's been huge for you, right? You didn't have to put a lot of money into advertising in the beginning, um, which is kind of which is kind of backwards, uh, for guys that are starting companies these days, they don't really put themselves out there and, and do the face-to-face marketing for their business. Is this tough? Like, okay, and there was an evolution with this. Like, the reason I came here and you know, to Oklahoma City from New York with this company starting fresh, and I was like, we have a different marketing approach. I mean, that came from all the mistakes I was making in New York. Like, just being inconsistent and not ever having any type of real marketing plan, not having any type of real knowledge or anything. But basically, losing my company and learning through other people around me sort of what went wrong and how things could have been different and this and that. And I learned that at least... There's so many reasons, but like, it was fundamentally flawed because I had, first and foremost, I basically had most of my, most of my eggs in the Yelp basket. You know, I'm getting, what, I'm getting 40% of my leads from Yelp, which is cool, but what if Yelp gets wiped off the face of the map? Or what if Yelp starts to suck? Oh, boy. It, d- it did that. Mm-hmm. I don't look at Yelp myself. I look at Google. People still use it, whatever. But back then, it was pretty big, especially in New York City. So it was all like Yelp, and I had a very strong word of mouth. And of course, you got your trucks, and then a little bit of Google, a little bit of Facebook. Facebook seemed to be good to us just running ads but I feel like running Facebook ads used to be very easy to run ads and get business from it's not like that anymore at least not here in OKC in New York you'd be like oh we're slow run some Facebook ads and it was like magic but it's not like that anymore that was 2000 it was almost 10 years ago almost you know 7 6 to 10 years ago um I didn't and I didn't know anything I didn't really understand, or I didn't understand the the effectiveness and and, and the and the essential nature of uh, what networking was. I didn't learn that till I later. Like I learned that through, and I and I didn't even learn about networking really through through the moving industry. On the very tail end of me being in the moving industry in New York. I worked for the person that bought my company for me, a much larger company. And that's where I learned more about business development and the really neat, like the, like networking being necessity, you know, like the real fundamentals, you know, and it's like having a multimillionaire tell me day in, day out, like, why would you spend one single dollar on an ad whenever you can just put a suit on and walk down the street and go to the right place and or help for anyone for that nature I mean you can just walk down the street you can go find your fucking business go find it hit the pavement yeah hit the pavement and I mean most of us but I think where I think where people I think I think where people have a hard time doing that is like Fill a room full of ten people and ask them. Say, raise your hand if you like going to crowded places and 
walking up to a complete stranger and greeting them and telling them about yourself and your business. Although that's what everyone's there for, but raise your hand if you, if you want and like doing that. You want to know how many hands are going to go up in a room of 10? Not even half. Dude, like two. Yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe five. I think that's super generous. And I'm talking to people who are answering just honestly, like being honest with themselves, mm-hmm. you know. Like, is this something I really wanted? Is that something you really want to do? And it's like, no, oh, probably not. Um, so, you know, it's hard um, to break through certain, like, social barriers and stuff like that. But I happen to be okay with that. I don't necessarily, hey, I have some social anxiety too, just like most people do and all this shit. I don't really love it. But like, I'll do it and I know deep down that like I'm good at speaking to people and I'm definitely good about talking about my vision. Mm-hmm. That's it. I'll tell my, I'll tell my company story all fucking day. Like, till I'm blue in the face. Like, that's easy. I love talking about Sherpa or my experience and my own company and I'm I like talking about this stuff. It's relevant to the environment. Um, And if you're at a networking event, it obviously is. So that's easy for me to kind of get out there and just kind of knowing and and, and just knowing that the best business is coming from this sector uh, where you're the just peer to peer, word of mouth, you know, all the home service people out there, realtors, roofers, everyone. Um, so it's easy for me to kind of dive into that and especially here in Oklahoma City I really feel like I came in with an edge because I'm this guy that is from here but I've been living in New York City and I was in the Marine Corps I've been in New York for like 12 years and I was in the Marine Corps before then I haven't been here in a long time there's already a story to tell there so and, and this is a really small market so man it was really easy for me to be like yeah, this is, I want to go out there and knock some socks off of some folks, man. Like, some of my best referral partners, dude, like, closest ones, best ones, um, most amazing people, the best jobs, yeah, I mean, the, 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 the low-hanging the low fruit, the money makers, like, dude, I just walked into their offices. I remember one, they walked in, I poked my head in the door it was like and there were like four women sitting there all at their computers just a real real estate office the owner was one of them and she had like three of her people with her and they were all on their computers and I just poked my head and I was like are you guys busy <laughs> they were like no come on in and I walked in and I mean the rest is history yeah just walking like, in the door man Walking in the door, it's all about creating relationships, man. Like, that's where it's really coming from. Or at least that's where it needs to come on, come from from the beginning. You need to build, like, a solid foundation of reliable and consistent referral partners, real estate agents specifically. That's when you start getting into, like, email marketing and all this shit that I didn't even really, definitely wasn't practicing and didn't even really discover and. It, and I think it was even relevant until I got here and I was like I've been in I've been a business owner for I've been a moving company owner for 11 years I started email marketing not even three years ago and that blew my mind when I started doing that marketing out to the real estate agents emails once a month newsletters there's a great company out there called Moversville everyone's heard of them if you haven't heard of it, like, if you're not with Louverville, I think that you could be mm-hmm. and see some see some changes. Um, but I don't know. I just, I, I made a lot of mistakes in New York. So, like, coming here and coming into this new, fresh new company, and let me tell you, just a side note, starting over and starting fresh is brutal. Hey. A lot of time and therapy hours <laughs> to to get through it, but uh, holy shit! But it's starting to you know starting to paint out. But 
but I made a lot of mistakes in New York, and I just feel like I I brought those here, all my lessons learned, and here I was like back to the basics, like back to the basics, like let's go, let's let's hit the pavement, let's fire up the social media. Social media is free. Let's get that Instagram going big. Time. Instagram's connected to Facebook. I don't really know how to mess with Facebook a whole lot, so I'm pretty heavy on Instagram. Um, so I don't. I probably could be better with Facebook, but I don't. You can only do so much, right? Yeah. And I don't care about Facebook, and I know that I can post something on Instagram and it goes to Facebook, whatever. Um, and there's plenty of Facebook traction, anyways. But um, fire up the social media, like. How can we keep our marketing budget super small so we can, because we're brand new, we're trying to get this off the ground, we don't even have money for a lot of marketing in the first place. If you have an up the warehouse space like we did starting out with an expensive rent, so out, like, dude, this, these bills are going to be hard to cover when you first start. So to go in hot and heavy, Unless you've got the money, that's amazing. If you don't, but going in hot and heavy with some like two or three thousand dollar Google shit going on, and you're just sitting in an office waiting for lease to come in off the internet, sounds like a bit of a slow burn to me. And the quality of leads, Google people that are online, like. You want to maximize that and get a shitload of it because it's going to be th- those are more difficult to book people are shopping mm-hmm. I want the realtor referral because the person that they referred they're probably more than likely not shopping they're looking for a good mover and they trust the realtor to say when, when they ask for a good mover the realtor's going to be like oh call Sherpa they're the best. That is end of story for that shipper. Like, they, they're like, sure, but done. I don't care. Whatever their price is, what, is what their price is. Dara told me to call Sherpa. That's who I'm calling. I'm not sure. First time I've hired movers. So I'm doing what I'm told right now. That's what you want. Most, I feel like you want mostly that, obviously. We call that low hanging fruit. Like, we want that. Yeah. More fruitful, bigger jobs come from there most of the time. But if you have a flood of Google coming in too, that's amazing. And that's what I'm working on now. I'm, in, I'm, I'm at my like three year mark. Mm-hmm. I've, I've thrown more fuel on higher in the last three months with, with, with a good couple of people who have been helping me and I'm starting to really see those Google results but I'm, I'm really starting to uh, become eager to take my to take my SEO to the next level it's important man I've seen a huge increase in um, leads from Google just Google search because of the SEO work I've put in over the last year and a half huge right and now I'm at a point where I'm in the Google 3 pack so if you go to Google Maps and you search for movers we're we're one of the three top moving companies listed right and when people go on to Google they're looking at you know the first like five links and they're gonna choose one of those links you you, you're more likely gonna be picked out of one of those links than you are if you're on the second page of Google but I'm seeing it now, man. I'm seeing steady business over the last like six months. Um, and the majority of that is word of mouth, but right under that it's Google. And it's not even paid advertising with Google. My budget has went down so much. It's just all organic traffic from Google Maps or just from the search engine. How many leads from Google are you getting on any given day? So just, just let's just let's just say the last three days. So I've probably gotten anywhere from three to five calls, and that's direct calls. And each one of these cu- customers um, want to work with me. But it's also the end of the month, right? 
So you got a lot of moving companies that are overbooking jobs, canceling on their clients, and these people are scrambling to find <clears throat> find movers. But um, yeah, over the last three months, I think I've generated close to 100 leads from Google. This is what's happening with us right now. Is I use MoveAppro, and one, two, three, four, five. There's the like the top five referral sources are on the dashboard here. This entire time we've even been open, real estate agent and word of mouth have always, literally every month, are always the top two. No matter what, always. Google's usually at the bottom. And there's a couple things at play going on here. A few things going on uh, uh, that's going on here is First and foremost, we all know right now that the market's cooling off, and that's going to vary. Like the to, to to how extreme it is, I think it's going to vary by city, but it's cooling off fairly substantially here. I think thirty percent or so, and uh, so that correlates with our with our real estate agent referrals which are right now sitting in third place. It's been at the bottom for a few weeks and it's starting to pick back up now. But the cooling market reduced our real estate agent leads. And with Google, since I've been working much harder and vigorously with the team on Google for the last three months, that's taken the place of real estate agent word of mouth in first place by anywhere from like three to five thousand dollars at any given time. And that's the first time that that's happened for your company, right? Because okay. you've been sharing this data with me for the last like year and a half, and every time you're like, "Dude, real estate right at the top," which, which is, is great. But now, what I'm I think what I'm getting at here is that I'm very grateful and I feel like it was good timing for me to start fanning the flames on this Google shit because the market's cooling down and I've got Google taking up some slack but most of the Google the thing is oh and just by the way word of mouth number two and it's been number two since Google's been number one so word of mouth being nice and strong under under being in second place is great it's huge like Love that. Um, it's just kind of neck and neck. But the thing with Google is, is it's it's churning out some leads, and I'm super grateful for that. Like, we've got three leads just today so far since midnight, and I feel like it's been Google and a, maybe two Googles and a word of mouth. I feel like we're getting several Google leads a day. But the thing with Google, not only are they competitive. They're also usually, I'm talking probably a solid 60, 70% of the time are small, very small stuff. Real, like some stuff is like, I had a lady yesterday and she's like, I went even well below our minimum. She wanted like a head, like bed frame or headboard taken downstairs at her house. Mm -hmm. Like I can help you in the afternoon, but I'm not gonna tell you no I want to try to make some money and I already got a team out so why not shoot him over there real quick I wouldn't just put I wouldn't I wouldn't try to do that by itself but I already had a team out they could make it easy go get some cash great and I was like 250 and she's like basically no I want to pay $100 for this mm-hmm. and that's what's coming from Google I don't have that coming from my realtors like, I don't have that coming from my word of mouth. Yeah. Uh, I might see it from a return customer, which is, the, by the way, the fourth place, and Yelp is at the bottom. Um, I put very, very little into Yelp, but I do get some Yelp love. It's on the list. It's so, like, there's enough revenue, there's enough There's enough Yelp revenue for it to be in our, on our dashboard. And return customer, like I said. But, um, a lot of Google leads are small too. And that's cool. Every lead leads to more business and that's great. Um, but 
I just feel like with Google, I don't know, I just feel like that just in the last few days, I feel like I've come to some realization of this. I know, I know that I need to probably be spending more money on it. Um, I know that I need to be Google guaranteed, David. Um, I was talking to this guy about it yesterday too. Um, I think I just need to, just in general, amongst some other things that are relevant right now through the conversation. But I'm gonna. But I think more money in general would be would be good. Um, there's a lot of talented people out there too that have been doing moving SEO specifically for a long time. You know, there are people out there like that too, and you find one of them, they could really help you grow your business exponentially that exponential exponentially quicker sorry um than what you might be doing right now and that's kind of what i'm pushing into is like we were kind of talking about shiny shit earlier it's, but it's like wouldn't i rather make what i already have work better for me and if that requires spending more money which it usually does always uh, does then let's let's do that like let's do that and I can say that I'm not unhappy with my consistency right now it's staying consistent and I like that and September starting to fill in because the market's cooled down so much the last few weeks but we're, we're strong still uh, we're still having a, uh, we're having a profitable August it's not a hand over fist fist August but it's a clean August it's a quiet August and it's a profitable August that's priceless that's huge now if you can but if you can if you can if you can double down on that still keep it clean and profitable and quiet but still double down on that seems very chaotic doubling down on uh hundred thousand dollars a month doubling down on that seems pretty chaotic but it doesn't have to be it does not have to be I feel like chaos is really avoided in your approach to your customers I'm the owner I'm the only salesman here and I do 80% of my estimates in home I've got three of them today. I've got to leave in 15 minutes to my first one. Um, but I go in there as the owner. If they don't know that, they'll know it by the end of the estimate. And they never don't like that. But I go into these estimates and I'm super candid with people. And I, I set their expectations being really diligent and communicating things about how uh, moving insurance works and doesn't work and how it's not a you break it we break it we buy it system a lot gets lost in translation when it comes to how damages and things are, 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 are processed and worked out they need to know or anything happens they need to know definitively through your lips that we basically are not responsible for this shit. we're responsible for moving it and we're responsible for being professional and doing a good job and trying our best every single day we're definitely responsible for that but we can't help that moving is a is, is haphazard in nature in the first place and the wrong thing moved at the wrong time three or four inches it's going to damage this thing it doesn't matter who's doing it but just it's accident prone I'm not an ATM machine and I'm not an insurance company and this is what you're getting and if there is any negligence involved and and if it is a, an easy fix or whatever we need to keep the feed we don't want to piss anyone off and 
make anyone disgusted with us and leave a bad review and never refer us again. We want to avoid that, but people have to understand that appreciated furniture has no like inherent type of like value that you know, like some set value that you know someone knows. Like, no, this desk I'm sitting here right now. I know it was kind of expensive, actually. It was almost a thousand dollars. It was pretty basic, pretty basic desk and. Freaking drawers broke. I've had it for four or five years. The drawer's broken. Like, if this got damaged, like, by some movers, I wouldn't be happy. But I would know that that's the risk that I took when I hired them. And that this thing is already broken. And it's five years old. And it's been, this desk right here has been moved. This desk right here has probably been moved like 10 times. Dude, it's important that you do that and you, you when you do these in-home estimates that you're explaining to the customer that there is a risk with moving your furniture. And you're walking through through your processes and your insurance with the customer so they know right up before they book you what they're getting them what agreement they're getting themselves into. I used to not do that, but this last year I've been having these conversations with the customers and it's cha- it's changed my business. It's like it's it's night and day. Just me being able to communicate that to them is such a relief. And I even have the information on the estimate. It's like one of the first things they read. So they be all but they don't they hardly ever read it and if you don't explain to them how depreciation and 60 cents per pound and all that works they're not gonna they're first off they're not gonna read it they're, and then if you don't explain it to them verbatim they're not gonna understand and they're just they're just gonna be entitled so like i don't you know i'm, so, I'm sorry i cut you off no no you're good you're good bro but it's right at the top of our con, dude. It's right. It's in. It's in everyone literature. People do not get it. I like to throw one s- super simple analogy at them, and I'm just like, I'm like, three thousand dollar move, three thousand dollar damage, labor, Uncle Sam. End of story. How am I supposed to pay my people and pay Uncle Sam on what is still income if I'm giving it all back to your dumbass? You know? Well, yeah, and of course there's times where, you know, your your crew might just be completely complacent and say they accidentally knock a, uh, a dresser down a flight of stairs. Well, obviously, you know, you're going to have a conversation with the customer to try to make that right. They take care of business. Exactly. We're not going to let anyone... We're not going to give any anyone any room to not refer us again. A, a, a review is one thing, but I want the referral. I want the referral. I want the trust. I want the customer to be like, yeah, they 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 dropped my dresser, they knocked a hole in the wall, but they fixed it, and they were still great. They were great. It was an accident, and and then they'll end the conversation with their friend with that probably won't happen to you. Because I think it's rare, anyways. It just happened to me. You have empathy for your customers. Yes, I do. But I have, I used to have too much and reeled it in, and it's done nothing but good for me. Because I still have it. I'm not cold. I'm just more by the book now, and that's helped my spirit more than being empathetic towards some stranger that probably wouldn't piss on me if I was engulfed in flames. So like, why why am I feeling so sorry for this dude or this lady that doesn't really give a shit about me and she's mad about her 50-year-old, not even 50-year-old, probably like some like 20 or 30-year-old piece of furniture from the 90s that's been sitting there collecting dust and one of my guys like looked at it wrong and she's got her fangs out wanting the whole world like given to her Mm -hmm. that's where I'm like no not anymore you know and that was kind of man throughout my whole career that's been one of the biggest and best changes that I've made professionally for myself is 
being more by the book. And honestly, dude, probably, I'm probably an outlier. I think most moving companies, moving company owners, whether big or small, are by the book. They're like, yeah, no shit, Jesse. Like, we don't give our money away like that. We don't buy people brand new shit just because we feel bad for them. We have a company to take care of. We have a company to grow and moving is haphazard and we explain that to our customers and it's in the literature even if we don't explain it to them, it's still their responsibility to read it. And if they don't, sorry for you. You know? Mm-hmm. Well, like that net, I think that that's most moving company owners. I, I'm not, I don't feel like I'm representing, at least on that front, I don't feel like I'm representing tons of moving company owners that are like overly empathetic and scared it's fear feeding into you. Mm-hmm. I'm scared of this customer I'm scared of them being mad at me. that's all it is it's fear well fuck fear like we all know that at this mm-hmm. point you're a, a business owner whether you've been in it for six weeks or whether you've been in it for six years or 16 you've broken through at least one fear barrier the first fear barrier you broke through was starting your business in the first place. So you might be six hours old. You might be six minutes old. Like, you know about fear if you're in business. And fear is a, I want to take a quote from the book Dune, fear is a mind killer. And there's just nothing more real about that. Fear kills you, it breaks you down. Fear makes you lose. I've lost money through a lot of fear, man. Like, I'm done with that shit. I'm done with that. Yeah, I can see that, man. I, I'm, I'm done with it as well. I think that it's like a balance between, like, empathy and policy. And then also, like, protecting yourself and your business. When I started Headband, I was really quick just to replace a $1,500 piece of furniture. Even if I took the loss because I was afraid they were going to go online and talk bad about the business. But then I learned it's just I through these through these mistakes that we've made, damaged furniture, it's just important to be able to stick up for yourself but also know how to talk to the customer. Hear their story, you know, just just keep the dialogue rolling, let them know that you do care. Um, but man, it, it's it's definitely a balance uh, between policy and um, yeah, man. Yeah. I think you do have, and I think there is a time and a place for it. Like, like especially when you are new. Like, you have a, you have a business to build. If you start, like, pissing people off right out of the gate, it's not a good look. It's not a good look. You wait till you're three years old and start telling people to fuck off. Like, because well, I'm joking. But I know you are. Not really. But, but seriously, <laughs> stand your ground. Well, it's just more of like this. Like, at this point, at this point, one, one person that doesn't understand, one entitled person that doesn't understand things that they don't feel like understanding, they're making a choice not to understand, one person like that, once in a blue moon, isn't going to sink anyone's ship. The fuck you. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I did what I could for you. Mm-hmm. I gave you, I gave you, I gave you everything I could. I paid for the hole in your wall, which is a hundred bucks. I took the few minutes off your bill that you complained about. I did that. But now two weeks later, you're coming to me again with something else and I can't do anything else for you. Here. We're done. I haven't talked to you in two weeks. I've like I fixed this stuff over here. Like now you're coming to me with something new. No, goodbye. I'll block you if I have to. Yeah. And I tell them that. I don't really go into the blocking part unless I have to. But I do tell them like I've done what I can. Like this is pretty. Like sorry. I've already. And which me doing what I can, even me sticking by the book is. I'm still gonna go above and beyond somewhat. Some somewhat. Mm-hmm. 60 cents per pound doesn't equate to very much but so if I've got to if I've got to give someone 150 to 300 bucks or something like that to keep them happy fine I'll patch up your wall and stuff I'm just not gonna be buying people brand new stuff and I'm not gonna be 
reimbursing all this stuff. I'm not going to be giving giving anyone fifteen, two, three thousand dollars, four thousand dollars. No, no. Yeah, I think that's that there's like a. I mean, you can have a million dollar moving company, but it doesn't mean you're going to be profitable, right? And not a, and if you're giving away thousands of dollars back to your customers because that's just your policy, you're not going to be making money. The, the The expenses in this industry are just so high, man. Let's say I just cannot wait until next season. Like, it's been a profitable 2022, but I'm much more excited about next season because it's just going to be even better. It's just every year. And that's the idea, obviously, with any business is every year you want things to be better. You want things to be more profitable. You could do the same amount of business that you did the year prior, not a dollar more in revenue, but you can make more money off of that just by being smarter than you were the year before. You know, like that's what it's all about. And I had a good friend, his name is Rick. He, he taught me this whole mentality of like don't look don't look don't look around corners don't look elsewhere for more and more and more like just focus on what you have make make it better where are you losing money are you spending too much money here talk to your bookkeepers are you spending are you spending money on senseless marketing look at that are you doing marketing yourself when someone else should be you know like look at that like these are all play like are you do you do you have i've got one for you do you have too many people working in your office and not enough people out in the field because you don't have enough moves going churning out revenue to pay for these people working in your office i've done that before labor's super touchy i think we all know that especially if you're running a payroll like you should be writing check writing handwritten checks to people once a week or every two weeks or whatever is no fun but I know it happens sometimes but have a payroll set up like this shit's expensive so we do have to minimize costs we just need to spend money smart and spend it in the right places when it comes to marketing especially if you're just starting out I would highly recommend focusing on more grassroots type marketing styles It'll cost a lot of money, but where you're building relationships, you have to build relationships. That's and I and I have to go right now, and that's really what I want to leave you with is just that relationship. There's nothing that's going to be more potent and more powerful for your business than, than, than having someone being that guy. Everyone's got a guy for something, right? I've got a oh, I got a guy. I got a guy. You know, I'm a lot of people's guys around here. And that all came from me meeting people, engaging with people on Instagram, talking to people on Instagram that I've never even met in person. I've got a lot of those. I've got a lot of pen pals that I've never even fucking met. Like, I'm so engaged in the community. So, like, that's super strong. But if you've got a market cooldown and you're in home services, and that's all you got, you're gonna cool down with that market. You don't want that, you wanna be diversified. You need to have equal or greater uh, generation going on on the, on the internet too. For sure. Nice. Yeah, and if you've got both of those, dude, you're gonna grow. You're gonna grow quick, you're gonna grow a lot. Um, you're going to be making a lot of people happy, a lot of customers, a lot of employees. Um, you're just going to be on top of your game. So, like, that's what I'm working on right now. But I do got to go. All right, brother. I appreciate the talk, man. It's yep. been, so, thank you. Yes, sir. Let's talk soon. All right, brother. All right, Bye. peace.